What's up everyone, I'm Justin Fiedler from Dirt Tracker and this is the Rico Rundown. This season I'm taking you inside the Rico Abreu Racing team as they compete for the High Limit Series Championship and sprint car races from coast to coast and even around the world. The High Limit season is just about ready to get back rolling again after having several weeks off following the last race at Golden Isles in February. Rico and the team did enjoy some rest and relaxation after closing out a trip through Florida and Georgia to start the year, but they've been back in action these last two weeks to take on the World of Outlaws and get their season going again. On this episode, we'll talk 81 Speedway, US 36, and the Jason Johnson Classic at Arrowhead. Plus, get you ready for a busy stretch on the horizon with six High Limit races coming up over a 10-day period. While many of his fellow High Limit full-timers chose not to race over the past few weeks, including championship rival Brad Sweet, I wanted to know from Rico why they decided to load up and get back to racing. I just think that, you know, getting the elbows greased up, racing with some solid competition, um, you know, the outlaw tour is very hot and heavy right now, very competitive, and for us to uh, to kind of break away and have the freedom to go run those races uh, was a big deal to my team, where we're just not, um, you know, rolling right into a high limit race uh, after a month long break. I think my, it's important for my team to, to go get some laps, me get some laps as a driver uh, and just keep working. I think this Wickerbill stuff is, is getting very, very interesting. Um, you know, on the mechanical side and, and for Ricky and Zach and Brady to go more, more and more laps uh, under them and myself, uh, you know, working through uh, the balance of our race car. So um, we, we, we take as many laps as we can to get ahead of everybody else. And I think it was, it was a big plus um, these last three races, uh, you know, getting to compete with, uh, you know, with the World of Outlaw guys. Coming out of the break, 81 Speedway in Kansas was a track that Rico and the team had circled on the calendar as a place they knew they could win at. Rico dominated the World of Outlaws feature there in 2023, and crew chief Ricky Warner had been part of the previous three Outlaw wins at the track, going back to Donnie Schatz in 2017 and way back to 2006. Ricky said that he's actually undefeated there in Outlaw competition. And once racing started, things went according to plan all night long, with Rico going fourth quick in his group during time trials, finishing second in heat race two to make the dash, and winning that dash from the pole. Early in the main event, Rico did have to battle with fellow front row starter Buddy Kofoid to get control. Abreu was good on the bottom of three and four the last time. Now Kofoid right through the middle, pulls even with Rico Abreu. At the line, Abreu leads it by 22 thousandths of a second. Kofoid on the cushion. They nearly get together coming out of turn two. Fantastic action out in front of the field early on in this 30 lap feature. Later in the race though, the 24 settled in out front and they were able to even make a little bit of history. One more lap to go and now David Gravel catching Donnie Shots for second. Gravel to the inside, slides up in front of the number 15. Down the back straightaway and into three and four for the final time. Rico Abreu makes it nine winners in nine races. History in the books at the 81 Speedway. We had never previously had nine different winners to start a World of Outlaws season, and Rico set the record with his first victory of 2024. With Ricky Warner staying perfect at 81 Speedway and Rico now leading 60 straight laps, I had to ask how tight the security is on the old Tricky Ricky setup notebook. He's uh, He doesn't keep it that locked down. Um, you know, he talks a, little, a lot about, um, you know, the, the critical thinking side of things and that, that last minute decision on what direction to go. But um, I did hear him um, make comments of, to, to Brady about, um, you know, just making sure that uh, nobody knows about these things if they get onto something and Zach and, um, you know, and we get our car on scales after a race like that uh, where we feel really comfortable and, um, you know, take all those notes. But he's he's pretty open. And I think a lot of Ricky's knowledge comes from, information from others and 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 he's open to helping others uh, as well or answering questions obviously um you know i i hope he doesn't give enough information to um get other teams better than us but i think uh ricky absorbs and retains a lot of that information and what's made him so successful over the years is um him being able to have conversations with other mechanics other drivers and, and be very candid on those conversations um you know so it, it's cool to see the process uh you know but at the end of the day um you know you can have all the notebooks in the world and when you get to the racetrack and um you know those feelings you get and the decisions you make um you know it's if you live off of a notebook i, I don't feel like you get too far 
Following the win at 81, the 24 team spent this past weekend again with the World of Outlaws making stops at US 36 Raceway in Missouri and Arrowhead Speedway in Oklahoma. Qualifying in heat races continued to be a strength, and it was two more dash appearances. The luck of the draw, though, wasn't on their side for these two shows, with Rico pulling the 7 and the 8 for those dash starts. Things in the feature at US 36 went sideways late when Rico had an incident with Carson Macedo racing for a top five position. They did bounce back though at Arrowhead with a sixth place run after starting in eighth. Arrowhead Speedway was a place I had spotlighted on an episode of Dirt Tracker Daily as they had done incredible work there building a modern facility. And I was curious about Rico's thoughts and how he viewed the facility. Amazing. I mean, it's a, it's a, class a facility i mean top notch it's it competes with the top tier series you know the top tier racetracks uh, that we get to go to across the country it reminded me a lot of like Perth motorplex that a lot of people don't know about and all this money was invested in these places and and, and it's just this hidden gem that um you know has finally got a uh, you know, a major series, a national series to come in and uh, and get to compete on their track surface. That show at Arrowhead was also the Jason Johnson Classic, a race Rico won in 2023. And I wanted to know why it was important to him to support that event and events like it. Yeah, I think you you really just think of, of Jason Johnson, his family, his career, his success in racing, how passionate he was about racing. Um, you know, that's a, that's a race that I want to support um you know for the rest of my career um you know and 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 bobby and jason's family you know the work they do to promote those events they're moving them around giving other racetracks opportunities to to have these this crown jewel event that it's becoming um you know and you can feel the the tension is high in in the pits for drivers wanting to win that race and amazing experience last year getting to win it in that time with jacks and the family on the front straightaway um you know they're just those moments that you know, a lot, a lot of people don't get to experience, um, you know, and, and Jason at the end of the day created all this. So it's, it's just, um, you know, it, it's his passion. And, and that's why you see these fans show up um, in his gear, supporting him, his family. And, um, you know, it's, it's just becoming every year a more and more amazing event. With this opening stretch of Word of Outlaws appearances complete, Rico has a win, three top fives, and five top tens in seven races to go along with an average finish of 7.8. The numbers that really stand out to me, though, include wins in five of seven heat races and a perfect seven for seven in dash appearances. Rico is tied for the most heat race wins and leads the Outlaws in heat race average finish. No other driver has appeared in every dash possible. Starting the sprint car season, we've seen and heard about this potentially budding rivalry between the high limit teams and the World of Outlaws teams. I've talked to drivers on both sides about the situation, and there are definitely some that are embracing this. Rico is definitely one of them, and we've seen him have a little fun on social media around racing with the Outlaws. And that included a video from a few weeks ago where Rico and the Outlaws make an appearance in a Buster Scruggs parody. As a guy who's been part of plenty of dirt racing social uh, media shenanigans in the past, this got a 10 out of 10 from me. I obviously had to take the opportunity to ask Rico about it and let him tell the community how and why he's embracing it. I I, I think it's amazing. Um, you know, I, I feel like it's it drives a lot of eyes to the sport, um, and and we're doing it in a in a kind of a humorous way where it's um you know I'm not sitting here going to ever make fun of any race car driver. I'm not going to sit here and point fingers at any one um, individual that's associated with any team or series sanctioning body. And I think you just kind of build it up so the fans um, see that this is an interaction between, um, you know, both series and that there's no one sitting here, um, you know, tearing anything apart. You, you want to see both series be successful. You want to see Brad and Kyle elevate um, you know, the high limit series and flow. And you want to see um, Brian Carter and World Racing Group have a, a successful, um, you know, decade and on to, in in the promotional side of what he's done with the sport. Um, you know, it's all just elevating. And I think, um, you know, you can have fun with this and allow the fans to 
to enjoy it and um, sit back and you can laugh or take it seriously or however you want. Saturday's high limit event at the Texas Motor Speedway Dirt Track is the Uncle Chicken's Sippin' Whiskey Stockyard Stampede presented by Whiskey Myers. And if you weren't aware, Uncle Chicken's Sippin' Whiskey is the new bourbon brand from the band Whiskey Myers. Inspired by a real life friend of the band, Uncle Chicken represents a best friend with an untamed spirit, a character as mysterious as he is legendary. You can find Uncle Chicken on tour, backstage at a show, and up all night till he's crowing at the dawn. Learn more and buy online at UncleChickensWhiskey.com. Rico and all the High Limit teams are headed into what will be a very busy part of the season with 19 races over the next six weeks, and that includes six races in the next 10 days. They'll be at Texas Motor Speedway Saturday, RPM Speedway on Sunday, then to Oklahoma for stops at Red Dirt, Southern Oklahoma, and the Salina High Banks. And that's before coming back to Riverside International for the rescheduled race from this past week. With such a pivotal part of the season on tap, I was curious how Rico is approaching everything. I'm re I'm ready. I was just talking to Ricky today. Like I'm ready to. It's it's so difficult. You get these rainouts and and rescheduled races, and you're sitting in your you know hotel room trying to figure out are they canceling? Are we going home? Or so I, I'm just ready to. And I don't want to get too antsy. Um and 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 make you know everybody feel not uncomfortable, but just um you know pushing a different direction, but I, I just am ready to get in a rhythm and get on a run and get some races in and, um, you know, get some good results going and, and just, um, get racing. You know, I, I love to race. I love to travel. I love the whole process of building up before these main events and, um, you know, organic communication with my team and the fans and the merchandise trailer at these events. So it's, um, you know, we got some great events coming up. We get, we're racing in Texas this weekend and then Oklahoma um, next week. And we're racing a, around a, a lot of good people, um, you know, um, some amazing fans. And I, I just am, uh, I'm ready to go. And I know my team's ready to go. And If you need tickets to any upcoming events, make sure to check out HighLimitRacing.com. And for the races you can't attend, make sure to watch it all live on Flow Racing. I hope you guys enjoyed this. That's it for this edition of the Rico Rundown. We'll see you guys again very soon.